In a world that often seems ruled by chaos and noise, there lies a powerful secret known by the ancient Stoics that can transform the way you experience life. It's not found in the clamor of the crowd, nor is it hidden in the relentless chase for fleeting pleasures. This secret is the art of mastering your own mind, a path to tranquility and strength that Stoicism teaches with elegant simplicity. Today, we're diving deep into this profound philosophy to uncover how the Stoic way of life can offer you not just peace, but also a clarity and resilience that stands unshaken even in life storms. Join me as we explore how to harness these timeless truths to steer through our modern world with the wisdom of the Stoics guiding every step. Whether you're battling daily stresses or seeking a deeper sense of fulfillment, understanding how to control your mind the Stoic way isn't just about coping with life, it's about thriving in it. If you appreciate what we're diving into here, a simple free favor I'll ask from you is to hit the subscribe button. And trust me, you won't want to skip any part of this journey we're on together today. Number one, let go of what others think. One of the most liberating teachings of Stoicism hinges on a simple yet profound idea. The only thing truly within our control is ourselves, our reactions, our emotions, and our thoughts. This principle encourages us to detach from the heavy weight of others' opinions. In our journey today, we delve into why letting go of what others think isn't just freeing. It's a strategic move towards mastering your own mind. Think about it. How often have you changed a decision, hesitated on a new venture, or even altered your appearance based on what you thought others might say or think? It's a common trap, one that can lead to a life driven by external validation rather than internal conviction. Stoicism teaches us to shift this focus. By anchoring our actions and thoughts in our own values, we strengthen our mental fortitude against the chaos of external judgments. Let's consider Marcus Aurelius, a Roman emperor and a Stoic philosopher who famously said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. His words are a call to focus on our own mental responses rather than trying to control the uncontrollable. This doesn't mean we become indifferent to others, but rather that we prioritize our own judgment and peace of mind above external approval. This philosophy doesn't ask us to disregard feedback completely. Instead, it empowers us to choose which pieces of feedback are constructive and aligned with our deeper goals and which are merely distractions. It's about cultivating a garden within where the seeds of your thoughts are nurtured by your own values and convictions, not trampled by the judgments of others. Imagine the freedom of making choices without fearing criticism or seeking approval. You begin to live more authentically, guided by what truly matters to you. As you practice this stoic approach, you'll find that not only does your dependence on external validation wane, but your confidence and inner peace swell. Number two, cultivate emotional resilience. This isn't just about toughening up in the traditional sense. It's about cultivating an inner landscape where your emotions serve you rather than control you. This is where Stoicism offers invaluable insights. The Stoics didn't teach suppression of emotion, but rather the understanding and managing of emotions to enhance well-being and personal growth. Consider the Stoic practice of viewing obstacles as opportunities, a method championed by the philosopher Seneca. He argued that every challenge or hardship was a chance to practice virtues such as patience, courage and temperance. By reframing our struggles as opportunities to develop strength, we transform our emotional response to them. Instead of feeling overwhelmed by adversity, we can approach it with a sense of purpose and use it as a stepping stone toward greater resilience. Another key aspect of cultivating emotional resilience is maintaining a perspective that aligns with reality. 
Epictetus taught that our distress comes not from events themselves, but from our judgments about them. By adjusting our judgments and expectations to be more in line with reality, we reduce unnecessary suffering. For instance, if we accept that we can't control the actions of others but can control our reactions, we're less likely to be upset by someone else's behavior. Emotional resilience also involves understanding that emotions themselves are not commands. Just because we feel angry, hurt or anxious doesn't mean we are compelled to act on those feelings. This distance between feeling and action is critical. It gives us the time to choose our response. The Stoics called this the space in which we can exercise our reason and freedom. To enhance your emotional resilience, start by incorporating daily reflections. End each day by asking yourself what went well, what challenges you faced, and how you responded. This practice of self-reflection reinforces your ability to apply Stoic principles in everyday life, gradually building your resilience. Now, think about how you can apply them not just in moments of crisis, but as part of your daily routine. Emotional resilience isn't built overnight, but with consistent practice and a stoic mindset, you'll find yourself more prepared to handle whatever life throws your way, not just surviving your experiences, but thriving through them. Number three, use the power of perception. At the heart of stoic philosophy is the profound recognition that while we can't control what happens to us, we can control how we perceive and react to these events. This is the true power of perception, realizing that our reactions are molded not by the events themselves, but by the interpretations we attach to them. Imagine this, you're stuck in traffic and running late for an important meeting. You can perceive this situation as a disaster, a narrative that might lead to anger and frustration. Alternatively, you could see it as an opportunity to listen to a favorite podcast or audiobook, thus reclaiming the time and transforming a frustrating experience into an enjoyable one. The stoic practice of perception management is about choosing the latter approach, actively deciding to view circumstances in a way that aligns with inner peace and wisdom. Epictetus, a stoic philosopher, famously said, Men are disturbed not by things, but by the view which they take of them. This encapsulates the essence of Stoic thought on perception. It's a reminder that our peace of mind comes not from the events in our lives, but from our responses to them. By training ourselves to adopt more helpful perspectives, we gain a significant measure of control over our emotional well-being. Cultivating this skill begins with mindfulness and self-awareness. It involves observing our automatic thoughts and questioning their accuracy. Does this thought reflect reality? Is there another way to view this situation? This practice of questioning and reframing is a form of cognitive restructuring that can dramatically alter our emotional landscape. To integrate this into your daily life, Start by identifying situations where your initial reaction might not be the most constructive. Experiment with reframing your thoughts to see the situation in a new light. This could be as simple as interpreting a critique at work, not as an attack on your abilities, but as valuable feedback that can spur personal and professional growth. The power of perception is not about deceiving ourselves or ignoring reality. It's about adjusting our lens so that we can see life more clearly and respond to it in ways that are aligned with our deepest values. By practicing this stoic technique, you not only enhance your own resilience, but also your capacity for happiness and fulfillment. It's a transformative process, turning everyday challenges into opportunities for growth and self-discovery. Number four, live according to nature. This doesn't merely mean taking more hikes or planting a garden, though those are fantastic ways to connect with nature, it's deeper. It's about recognizing and adhering to the natural laws of human behavior and the universe. 
the Stoics believed that every part of the cosmos, including humans, has a role to play, a purpose dictated by nature itself. For us, this means living a life of virtue in accordance with reason, which the Stoics considered the highest function of our nature. Marcus Aurelius often wrote about nature's interconnectedness in his personal writings. He saw each individual's actions as part of a larger symphony of the universe where going against this natural order causes discord and unhappiness. In practical terms, living according to nature involves several key behaviors. First, it encourages the practice of self-reflection to understand our place within the larger context of the world. This reflection leads to a profound understanding of what is within our control and what is not, helping us to live more harmoniously with the inevitable. For example, accepting that we cannot control other people's actions or the outcome of many situations, but we can control our reactions to them. Moreover, this Stoic principle teaches us to embrace simplicity and to find satisfaction in it. This could mean reducing our desires to align more closely with what is naturally necessary and sufficient for happiness. It asks us to question, are our pursuits and desires in line with our true nature, or are they artificially constructed by societal pressures? To cultivate a life according to nature, start small. Reflect each day on where you might be resisting natural flows in your life, or where you might be forcing outcomes. Try to align more closely with the rhythm of your environment. Wake with the sun, eat seasonally, and listen more deeply to your body's needs and the needs of others around you. This approach isn't about relinquishing ambition or desire, but about harmonizing those drives with the natural order, ensuring they arise from true necessity and virtue rather than fleeting whims. Let's remember that to live according to nature is to embrace a life of harmony, simplicity and virtue. It's about making peace with the world as it is, not as we wish it to be, and finding our unique and rightful place within it. As you move through your day, consider this stoic wisdom and observe how it might transform your understanding of happiness and your place in the world. Number 5. Practice Self-Discipline This is far more than just a method to control our urges or stick to a routine. It is about aligning our daily actions with our deeper values and virtues. Stoics believe that self-discipline isn't merely about personal gain, but about cultivating a life that is in harmony with reason and moral purpose. Seneca often discussed how self-discipline or self-control is essential to living a good life. He suggested that without it, we are slaves to our passions rather than rulers of our own minds. Imagine the power and freedom that come from being in complete control of your actions and decisions, no matter what temptations or immediate gratifications present themselves. This is the heart of Stoic self-discipline. In practice, self-discipline means making choices that reflect your values, even when they aren't the easiest or most immediately gratifying options available. For example, choosing to save money instead of spending it impulsively aligns with a value of financial security and independence. Similarly, deciding to wake up early to meditate or exercise before a busy day demonstrates a commitment to health and mindfulness, prioritizing long-term well-being over extra sleep. Moreover, the Stoics didn't see self-discipline as a solitary pursuit, but something that benefited the community. By controlling our impulses and making reasoned decisions, we contribute to a more rational, calm and considerate society. Each personal choice impacts those around us, whether we're aware of it or not. To incorporate more self-discipline into your life, start by identifying areas where your actions don't align with your values. Perhaps you value health but often skip workouts, or you value learning but watch too much uneducative TV. Once identified, set small, manageable goals to begin reshaping your habits. It could be as simple as reading for 30 minutes before bed, 
instead of scrolling through your phone or preparing a healthy meal instead of ordering takeout. Self-discipline in Stoicism is not about punishing oneself or living a life of denial, but about making reasoned choices that lead to true freedom and happiness. It's about being in control of your actions and, by extension, your life's direction. As you practice self-discipline, observe how it changes not just what you do, but how you feel about yourself and your place in the world. Remember, in the Stoic view, self-discipline is a form of self-respect. Every day that you live according to your principles, you honor yourself and the community to which you belong. It's about making consistent choices that build a resilient, fulfilling life, not just for yourself, but for all. Number six, embrace the present moment. The Stoic taught that the present is all we truly own and mastering our focus on the now can lead to profound tranquility and effectiveness. Marcus Aurelius often emphasized the importance of concentrating on the present task with full attention, a practice he described as doing one thing at a time and resting in the simplicity of his actions. Imagine if, instead of multitasking frantically, you chose to do each task sequentially with full dedication. This focus not only increases productivity, but also imbues each moment with quality and purpose. Living in the present also means accepting each moment as it comes without imposing our judgments or wishes on it. When we stop fighting reality, stop wishing for things to be different and start responding to the actual demands of the now, we engage with life on a more genuine level. This doesn't mean passivity or resignation, it's an active acknowledgement that the only time we can truly influence is the present. To cultivate this skill, begin by noticing when your mind wanders into the past or future. Gently remind yourself to come back to the present. Practices like mindfulness meditation can be incredibly helpful in developing this skill. Just sitting quietly for a few minutes each day, observing your breath and watching thoughts come and go without attachment can significantly increase your ability to stay centered in the current moment. Another practical tip is to engage fully with whatever you're doing. If you're eating, just eat. If you're walking, just walk. Fully immerse yourself in the sensations and activities of the present moment. This practice can transform mundane tasks into moments of deep life experience and joy. By embracing the present, you align yourself more closely with Stoic principles, enhancing your capacity to respond to life with equanimity and poise. Over time, this practice not only improves your mental well-being, but also deepens your relationships and your engagement with life, making each day richer and more fulfilling. Remember, life is a series of present moments, how we live each moment largely determines how we live our lives. Number seven, build or join a community. One of the more profound but often overlooked aspects of Stoicism involves the concept of community. Marcus Aurelius himself saw humans as inherently social creatures, meant to live not in isolation, but in harmonious interaction with others. This idea underscores the Stoic belief that building or joining a community is not just a personal choice, but a moral imperative. Stoicism teaches that each person has something valuable to contribute to the collective, and in return, the community offers support, wisdom, and perspective that one cannot find when alone. Imagine the strength and resilience of a network where each individual acts with virtue and reason. Such a group could significantly amplify the positive impact on each member's life. In practical terms, actively participating in a community can mean various things. It might be as simple as joining a local group that shares your interests or volunteering for causes that align with your values. In today's digital age, 
community can also extend to online forums and social media platforms where stoic principles are discussed and life challenges are navigated collectively. Participating in these communities allows for the exchange of ideas and provides a support system that can be crucial during tough times. It's about giving and receiving advice, sharing resources, or simply providing an empathetic ear. Every interaction offers a chance to practice stoic virtues such as kindness, understanding, and patience. Furthermore, engaging in community life enhances our sense of belonging and purpose. It reinforces the stoic idea that we are part of something larger than ourselves, which can be incredibly fulfilling. This doesn't mean losing your individuality. On the contrary, it's about expressing your unique virtues in ways that benefit others. To start building this aspect of your stoic practice, look for communities that resonate with your interests. Attend local or virtual meetups, participate in community service, or start a discussion group about Stoicism and its application in modern life. Each step you take towards being part of a community not only enriches your life, but also strengthens the collective fabric, embodying the true Stoic spirit of living harmoniously within the human cosmopolis. By fostering community connections, you embody the Stoic commitment to live virtuously, not just for your own benefit, but for the good of all. This integration of personal virtue with communal life is perhaps one of the most rewarding aspects of practicing Stoicism today. As we wrap up our exploration of Stoicism and its powerful teachings, it's clear that the wisdom of the ancient Stoics isn't just historical trivia. It's profoundly applicable to our lives today. The practices we've discussed from embracing the present moment to cultivating community, offer more than just a philosophy for individual tranquility. They propose a way of living that can fundamentally transform our interactions, our communities, and our own minds. Through the practice of Stoicism, we learn that true empowerment comes from within, from our ability to manage our perceptions, to align our actions with our values, and to connect deeply with the world around us. It's not just about stoic endurance or indifference, it's about engaging with life's challenges, with wisdom and virtue. Remember, stoicism isn't practiced in the isolation of our minds, but in the everyday actions we take and the relationships we forge. Each small decision to live according to stoic principles is a step towards a more reasoned, peaceful and fulfilling life. It's about the ongoing journey, not a final destination, and every step, every breath, every moment lived with awareness and virtue contributes to a life well lived. So I encourage you to take these lessons to heart. Start small if you need to, perhaps by reflecting each evening on the day's events and how you responded to them, or by reaching out to participate in or even create a community that reflects your values. Over time, these small actions will build into a life rich with purpose and serenity. Thank you for being a part of Stoic Journal. If you found these insights helpful, remember to hit the subscribe button and share this video with someone who might also benefit from these timeless teachings. Together, let's continue to explore, learn and grow, fostering a life that not only seeks personal peace, but also contributes to the greater good. Your engagement and comments are what make this journey so enriching. So please, share your thoughts, experiences and insights as we all strive to live more virtuous, stoic lives.